What's going on Axie fam, Elijah here back with another video and today I've got one I'm very excited about. We're looking at a new team composition that I've not gone over yet and it's going to be three birds. Well technically not three birds because one of these is a dawn but the move set is all bird cards. We're currently sitting at rank 57 on the leaderboard and today I'm going to be looking at a game I played against Hao Han here at rank number four. Very tough opponent but before jumping into that replay let's break down the team comp. It just so happens that a new patch for Origin came out today which I'll be covering very soon in a new video but these games were recorded just yesterday before that was released. However I think it's a really cool speculative build to look at a lot of potential I think it can still be very strong with the new patch and by the way I think the new patch notes are a very nice step in the right direction but I will get more into that in the coming days as for the team we have three birds we're calling it let there be light up front now let's take a look. Notice anything? Double talk across the board. Absolutely disgusting. Probably one of the strongest cards in the game. Similar to when people were playing Kestrel and Chomp at the beginning, disable cards are still insane. The reason for it is largely due to the disadvantage of drawing a lot of revenge cards. And if you're preventing an Axie from using their cards and then you get a kill, it can throw off their whole cycle and leave them empty handed and obviously way behind. The other thing that I have is Eggshell on all three. This is to completely manipulate where they go, make it very difficult for them to focus fire one of my birds and just disorient them. If every round they're attacking a different bird, that can be a real pain for them. That plus the disables is what really spearheads this team, but the quick breakdown of each Axie, I've got Feather Descend up front just to add some damage across the board for all of my Axies. For my charms, I have Secret Egg to make sure I can play Robin straight out of the gate. Now we just had a change where you can no longer attack in turn one, and I think that's gonna make for a very compelling case of putting innate cards on many move sets like this where you can station yourself, prepare yourself for battle with some assets like summons or buffs. So I'll definitely be looking to make that adjustment in the future. Double Talk needs Rocket Stamp or Sun Stamp to make sure that you can target any Axie or their backline Axie. The other cards are sort of fillers, just doing some decent damage. Cupid is nice for the bleed. And we put some Vitality on it too, just because it's the one that's up front and likely to be getting hit first. I might change that though to damage in the future, especially because he can no longer get hit first straight out of the gate in round one if I end up going second. The midline position, Energy Guru, just do doing a little extra damage for every time I play a card. There might be a better rune selection here. Maybe Raven's Tactic? I haven't really gone too deep into this build yet, so I just sort of slapped this one on there. So far, it seems to be okay. Double Talk again with Rocket Stamp, Secret Egg, play Mavis and Robin right away, which I think can be really powerful, especially if they don't have any AoE. Cottontail, which is really nice to draw early at times, although I think think this may be unnecessary, especially because I have Mavis twice on this build. I'm for sure going to tweak this and especially with the new patch make adjustments. But for now, this is what I have. And then on the back line, the Dawn, holy prayer. Yes, thank you very much. This is going to dispel all of those really pesky curse cards like Godas. And there's a lot of double Goda teams out there by removing them from my discard pile, thus rendering them useless while buffing up my team with damage boosts and heals. Okay, I think this is a really powerful rune. Notice how on this final Axie, I went with Sun Stamp. I think it's fine for one of these to just, you know, save one of my charm points by using Sun Stamp, which costs four instead of Rocket Stamp. This will always target his backline Axie. But as you can see, I have so much versatility on who I want to attack with Double Talks. This just gives me so much control and the power to disable across multiple rounds. It's been a really fun one to play. And let's go ahead and see how it performs in the arena. So as I mentioned before, I'm up against Hao Han, top 10 player. He's got the scale up front on his beast for damage reduction, endless anger at the midline, which is going to stack rage for him over the course of the game, eventually working up into fury form. And his bird has feather descend as well, so that he again also gets some damage boosts across his team. Notice the chubby here. This is big damage with bleed to cause AOE. So this thing is not messing around. But again, the Goda is going to work against him and he has two of those. Something 
thing, as I mentioned, that's quite popular, especially as you climb the ranks. I'm not seeing a lot of holy prayer out there, which, you know, is me trying to counter the meta. I think that there's tons of curse cards, not that many dons, and I want to play into that by making this adjustment and giving me a little bit more of an advantage in these types of matchups. So I get the advantage of going first here, and I'm going to play double talk straight onto his bird. Reason why, this is the guy I want to put out of the game because he has a disable as well, and I know how strong double talk is. Same thing with eggshell and his manipulation ability. So I'm just rendering him useless. You know, yeah, I can time double talks later on his midline beast to prevent him from going into rage mode, but right away, I just want to keep my foot on the gas and silence this little birdie that he has on the back line. Gonna play Robin as well, get the damage bonus, and now we're going into turn two for him. Two cards he can't play, no cottontail value immediately, no Mavis. He is gonna get big damage off here with Little Branch, 145. My bird goes down to 133. In turn three, I draw another double talk. And one of the advantages of having it on all three of your axes. And it's the same story, going on the birdie, 87 damage with the bonus from Robin. This is gonna do 15 bonus damage on all of my attacks, which is kind of crazy. There's the eggshell manipulating him to go midline. He will not be able to kill my bird at the front line. So far, so good for us. He's stacking up some feathers. There's the pigeon post, a card that kind of works to my advantage in this build. Tons of damage raining down on me, but not enough to get the kill. I'm gonna lead with early bird this round to draw another card. We get cottontail, which you love to see. That's gonna help this round a lot for me. We've managed to get the kill on the frontline beast. Throw a pigeon post in his hand as well to disrupt his draw a bit. Play the cottontail, Cupid on the midliner. He is gonna go into rage mode here. This is a little terrifying, but notice this. I actually get to play the blackmail on the Robin. So he's gonna have to waste at least one of his energy to kill the bird, not one of these birds, but the little mini bird right here. This is just like a crazy all bird team that we're looking at. And then start to focus on the front and mid afterwards. My Dawn is actually gonna be protected in this scenario. There's the pigeon post. He does not get anything worthwhile really here on his beast. We did mess him up there with the pigeon post of our own, making him draw one less of his cards. Chubby's gonna be big damage though, 98 across the board. He's basically just left uh, with one energy. He actually utilizes all of it, kills my frontliner and puts bleed on my mid. So not a bad round considering he didn't get one of his higher damage cards there. The chubby really made up for it. And now I'm kind of in a tough spot. If I play three cards on my midliner, it's gonna die. I'm in a very vulnerable position. He did throw the blackmail on his bird. I think he's feeling like he has better closing potential at this point with his midline beast. And he wants to maximize his chances of drawing a bunch of beast cards. And he doesn't want to hold the blackmail, which will throw that off slightly. So I think that was the right play for him. I'm going to go in for the kill here, I believe. Yeah, the double talk will go on the bird, but I'm just going to follow it up. Oh, wait, wait a second. Maybe I don't. Yeah, I don't actually. And that makes sense. I want to mess him up here. If I would have played eggshell with this bird having taunt, I would have woke it back up. So I think leaving it slept here, rendering it useless in the following round, and then just playing the revenge card, which you notice goes to the front always. It goes to the closest axie, regardless of any taunt mechanisms. Guaranteed that the bird stayed asleep. I get some damage on the beast. I don't even need to play the egg to taunt my backliner because I got a little favor from him with this blackmail, and it's good for me to play it and put the target on my Dawn's back without having to play the egg. So I think that line made the most sense. Notice how I also put my Mavis bird up front. This means he has to kill my back line and my bird up front before hitting my mid. Just a little extra protection, but let's be honest, if he kills my back line here, I think I'm pretty much smoked anyway. Ooh, yeah, there's the revenge card actually. Go straight through the front on my bird, opening up my mid line, and there's the Goda on the back. It's easy pickings for him at this point if he does secure the kill because of how weak my midline is. There's the Ronin. I have 30 HP. He's got a cottontail, but his bird's asleep. He has no way of playing another damage card, and now I'm sitting here with 30 HP and 24 HP on the midline. I am so close to dying. I've got damage boost, early bird to draw a card. There's a double talk. Not going to get the effect of it, but 66 damage to clear out the beast, and I think double talk and a revenge card... Oh, I play the Mavis because the revenge card won't kill him with 57 HP. Oh my gosh, this is so close. I have 16 and 7 health and a little birdie up front trying to help. 
It's gonna come down to what he's able to draw, and he gets a two cost energy, a one cost energy revenge card and blackmail and Mavis. This is not gonna be enough for him. It's gonna go one, two, and there's one more Axie left alive after this on the back line with 16 health. This top 10 opponent, which is always very, very tough to play against, is gonna go down here, and we're gonna secure the win this round with just a little extra damage to close it out. Extremely close game here. You get to see some of the nuances of this build, the manipulation, the silencing, and sleeps that can happen to disrupt his team and the flow of his cards, and it's just a very fun one. Plus the buffs that you get from Mavis and Robin makes for a really exciting team. And on that note, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I hope you enjoyed watching watching this team, the double bird Don combo, lots of birds with the summons as well. I'm enjoying Origin more and more. I'm loving the updates. I think we have a ways to go still, but we're definitely heading in the right direction. You know, it's more relaxing than V2. I get way less stressed out. The games are still close, which I'm enjoying, but you know, I'm also a hardcore competitor. So I did love that aspect of V2 being kind of insane in terms of its intensity, but we're looking to find that middle ground. I think we're gonna get there and let's keep going. Let's keep practicing, training, looking at the possibilities and experimenting. Thanks for watching this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.